Welcome to Career Pro Tips by Life in the Green Room. Life in the Green Room is all about helping busy professionals who want more out of their career. We provide action-oriented, tool-based plans that can help you navigate your career in the direction that you want to go. Career Pro Tips is a weekly video series where each week we dive into a topic that could be relevant today to your career and we talk about tools, tips, and tactics that you can take right away to start taking ownership. My name is Heather Green McLenn, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing at a Fortune 500 company. I have used all of these tools and I've seen my colleagues, peers, and team use them. I know that they will help you start taking ownership. So let's dive into episode number 24 of Career Pro Tips. This is an episode on motivation. So this is number two in a two-part series about motivation. In episode 23, we talked all about how do you get motivated at work when you like your job, but you have an afternoon or a day where you're just not feeling it. Episode 24, I'm talking about, okay, you have just not been happy with your job and you're feeling disengaged and you really want to feel engaged. What do you do? And that's what we're going to unpack here today. So. I'm gonna go in there, but I wanna be clear. I'm not actually talking about in this episode how to decide if you should stay or leave your job. I'm talking about once you have made that decision, what are the actions that you need to do to make both of those very successful? So that's what we're talking about today. You've not been motivated, you're disengaged, and you are to the point where you're like, okay, I need to do something or I need to leave. And depending on which path you choose, there's some different things that you need to do, some different plans you need to make, and that's what I'm gonna cover today. There's so much research out there about how many, um, how disengaged employees cost companies millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars, and they're very distracting for everybody else who's left. And if you're somebody who has high aspirations and motivations in your career, but somehow you have found yourself on the disengaged side, it is your responsibility to fix that. You own your career and you can make the choices and the difference to get yourself back on a track that's gonna allow you to have the kind of career that you know that you can have. Okay, so you you find out, you figure it out, you do the hard work and you come up and say, all right, I'm going to keep this job and it's really worth it or I'm going to make a plan to find a new job. Both of those are fine, but you have to make, you are responsible to make that choice. So let's talk about you've decided to keep the job. Okay, so you got to find a way to get yourself back on the side of engaged and get motivated. You're never going to be motivated 100% of the time, but it is very reasonable to expect yourself to want to get there and to be productive 80% of the time. That's a very realistic expectation. So think about this. It's really important when you're staying there that you have a whole picture. The challenge when you're disengaged at work is it can actually make your personal life really challenging too because people have an innate like in their human nature, they want to contribute. They want to know how they're adding value. And if they feel like they're not doing that at work, all of a sudden it can spiral down in their personal life and they can just have a really tough situation all around. So please take care to make sure you're fixing that if you're choosing to stay. When you stay, I need you to make a plan and talk through here some of those options for the plans. The first thing I want you to think about is really deeply think about, okay, what needs to change in your role for you to be happier at this job? I have a list of things for you to think about, but you need to be creative here because it could be something that's completely not on this list I'm gonna give you, but do you need to have a really tough conversation with your boss? Do you need to figure out if there is a way for you to transfer to a different department? Are you bored? Do you need to get a much more challenging and difficult assignment? Do you need to think through how you can automate some of the work you're doing. Maybe you have reports that are just taking a lot of time, but they're mind numbing for you. And then if you get something automated, you can do something more strategic. Do you need to stop gossiping? Do you have some bad social habits that are causing you challenges at work? Do you need to change up your routine completely and say, okay, I'm going on walks at lunch now, or I'm packing my lunch, or I'm somehow breaking some type of rut or routine or cycle that you're in that's not serving you? Do some really deep thinking here. Maybe you need to find a way to make your desk more productive and you need to clean it up and you need to get yourself some headphones so it's clear that you can do work because you're in an open office and that's a challenge. I don't know what it is, but really think hard about what's driving you to the point where you're not feeling motivated and then think about how you're going to fix it. And that's the whole work. Figure out how you're going to fix it and go after that plan. So the other thing I want you to think about if you're going to stay in your job is there could be a really big opportunity for you on the personal 
professional side, that's gonna supplement your work. So what I mean by that is, if you have been working on your career plan, you could have identified a whole bunch of things that you wanna work on. So maybe you want to improve your Excel skills or your coding skills, or you wanna become a better presenter, or you wanna work on your leadership skills or your networking, whatever. So maybe you also take this opportunity to say, how do I get that outside of work? If I don't see an obvious place in work, can I take a class? Can I join Toastmasters? Can I lead a nonprofit or a charity organization? Can I join an association so I can get some networking skills? And so sometimes building up your confidence on professional skills outside of work can help you port over and really help you take the ownership of the job that you're keeping and find a way to make it more productive. So those are my tips to think about if you're staying. If you've decided you need to go, you also need a plan. The very first part of your plan is to figure out what you want in your job. And I cannot stress that enough. There's other things in here, but I almost don't care. That's the most important and that needs to be the one that you do. Do not just say, well, I know I don't like this, this, and this about my job. Because what happens, and I've seen it over and over, is they go to another job and they don't have those three things, but they have three more things that the person really doesn't like. Don't let yourself fall into that trap. Do the hard work about what you do want and figure out, okay, what motivates you, what excites you, what type of work fires you up, and how do I incorporate that into a role that can be for me? I have a lot of tips and resources about this. We'll put some links in there below, but there's some things that can help you figure out what you do want, not just what you don't want. Okay, that's the most important tip. Do that. The second tip is also pretty important. I want you to still do the best job that you can possibly do in the current role you have. I know you're not excited about it, but I don't know how long it's gonna take you to find the right role, which is critical, not just a role, the right role. I don't know if you're gonna to need to use this network at some point in your future career. So do the best job you can while you're there. I am in no way saying go out in flames, burn the bridges. No, I think that's a terrible idea. I think that's the worst advice. I think you should continue to do the best job you can while you're there. Okay, the rest of your plan should be pretty standard for you. Make a plan to update your resume and update it to reflect the job that you want, okay? Don't just update it in the regular way. So put some thought into being intentional about having the, re the, cur the resume have supporting statements that go after the role you just found out that you're interested in. Update your LinkedIn, start looking on LinkedIn and Indeed and all the other sites. Start reaching out to your network, all of the normal steps you would go through when you're looking for a job. Okay, the last tip, and this goes for both scenarios, is that your plan is going to be wrong. I'm sorry, but I want you to know that up front. So you're responsible, you own your career. You're gonna come up with a plan, and you're gonna work your plan, and then at some point you're gonna realize it's not working, and that's okay, expect that. And when that happens, you're just gonna readjust, reassess, and then you're gonna go back after it. So don't think that you're gonna do this exercise once and you're done. You're trying to fix a pretty tough scenario where you're not engaged at work. And so the plan on it being iterative and you're gonna have a much better headspace when you have to kind of do some tweaking and get back to work on your plan. Okay, there's so much in here on motivation. I hope that you've liked what we've talked about in this two-part series, and I would love to hear what other questions you have on motivation or what how you have found a way around this. Leave us some comments below, and until next week, here's to owning your career journey.